<laughs> what makes a prodigal son? Um, you well, let's let's uh, Luke 15 again, and we read um, starting verse 12. And the younger of them said to, and the word his is actually not there. It is that's in parentheses. The younger of them said to father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Give me the inheritance that I'm supposed to get when you die. And without hesitation, um, and he divided unto them his living. Um, after a certain period of time, Sons, not sons of God, not sons in the image of Christ, but sons want freedom, okay? They want freedom. They want to stretch their wings. They want to do. They want to build. They want to create. They want to... <clears throat> and the father knows that. The father knows knows the process He's the one who made it that way. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure many, many, many married people wondered, Lord, why did you make it where we get married really young and have kids and have no clue what to do? Why didn't you wait till we were old enough to figure all this stuff out? <clears throat> and you figure it out after they're gone. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and you go, oh. Um, and that's why some people say, well, I wasn't a very good parent. It, it may not just be that they were just evil parents. It's that you look back and you go, gosh, there's some things that are definitely done differently. But, you know, <clears throat> the Lord made it that way. <clears throat> and um, uh, he made youth that way, that it wants to eventually go out on its own and let's face it when given the freedoms that the father will give those freedoms will be misused that's uh, the, that's just a fact uh, and and they will be misused because their thought of what is right and how best to proceed will be different than the Father's. Amen? Amen. Be different than the Father's. And, uh, and you know, if we were over in First John, um, so you can turn to First John again, but we're not going to look at that same exact scripture. Um, We're going to go to chapter 3. And, ver and keep your place, I hope, in Luke 12, or I mean Luke 15. You'll be able to find your way back, though. <clears throat> this is verse 12, 1 John 2, 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, and they're forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father, at, you know, in limited fashion, but yes. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that was from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Okay. <clears throat> well... <clears throat> Um, in a certain sense, it doesn't say much about fathers. It just repeats the same thing, whereas it doesn't with the young men. But before there was a world, before there was an institution such as the church or General Motors, before there was children there was him that was from the beginning. And everything that you need to know 
comes from him. That's from the beginning. Because, it, and you know, it's that, let this mic go. I'm going to draw on the chalkboard. I'm going to choose my weapon carefully. In the beginning, God. Okay. So what you have to realize is that God is the beginning. There is no beginnings before God or anything. There's just God. And then the beginning began to create. Can, can you see that? Okay. So if that's true, everything that came out from that, everything that came out from that came out from him that was from the beginning. All right? So that means that every, every shape, every form, everything, and what does the scripture say about it? That, that it, talking about Jesus, by him and for him and to him were all things made and be, all things exist. And, and so all of that in the heart of the Father pertains to the Son. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word the Logos, the Word was with God. Here, before there's anything else, the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Two beginnings there. The beginning God and the, the God that created. All right. <clears throat> so, what that means is, is that the to, to mature, to move from being a born-again child to a Bible-thumping, devil-stomping, blood-believing young person, <laughs> to being a father, is not that you, you know, to, to, to get to that place, is not that you have to examine everything that he created or everything. Unless, if we made this creation not just things, if we made this everything written in the word, it all comes back to, to the heart of who God is. And he doesn't describe him here except to say, you have known him that is from the beginning. You know where it all came from. And when you know him, you know all things. It, it's true. Okay, so a child is like, you know, somewhere located within this, you know, eternity past and I mean a future or, or past actually and then eternity future in our time in, in the period of time and so a child wherever he's born on the timeline he starts by goo goo dad dad I'm not talking about literal babies I'm talking about spiritual babies you know, uh, and he's, uh, I'm sorry, but he poops in his pants and he, you know, spiritually does all kind of stuff that can get you in trouble, you know, um, but they're a child and that's what they do. And, and this is one of the things I've often said. So a more mature person doesn't look at that and rebuke them and try to get them to not be what they are if they are a child, even if they've been a Christian for 20 years. If that's what they are, then that's what they are. And that's hard for people to understand because we go, well, the scripture says you should be, you ought to be more, you, you know, but you didn't, you know, you didn't do it. And so we say, well, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. You ought to be more. You ought to be more. Well, the thing is, if you truly can perceive 
you will be able to perceive if that's what they really are. And if they really are, you're not going to change them. All the teaching in the world, all of the rebuking in the world is not going to change them because that's exactly what they are. Okay? And that's, you know. And yes, if there's fault in that, they stand or fall before this guy, the beginning. That's, that's his business. But if that's what they are, then you pray and then you lay down your life. And you know, but, you know, the, remember, the parents wait up for the children, not the children for the parents. I mean, that's scripture, by the way. You know. All right. So you got that. But then in the midst of that, you've got, you've got a son or, or a, a young person, and they can cover more ground, and that ground can be um, everything from... Um, Casting out demons and and being strong and knowing the, the scriptures and everything. <clears throat> we call that the pinnacle. We would call that maturity. We would call that a father. You know, and we look at that, oh, oh, look at that. They're strong. They really know the scriptures. They don't have a problem with the devil. You see that? And we go, oh, they're so mature. No, they're not either. Let me tell you, anybody can learn the scriptures. Not everybody knows that which was from the beginning that created everything. And I, you know that I preach we should search the scriptures, so, so I'm not against that. I'm just saying anybody can learn the scriptures. Anybody can learn how to do a water baptism. Anybody can learn how to cast out a demon. Anybody can learn all those things. You can learn in time a bunch of things, and it looks mature. And I think that these two sons of, of the father in this story of the prodigal son, I think that's exactly what they assumed about themselves. I think the younger son said, hey, you know, um, give me the wherewithal for me to go out and produce, you know. And, <laughs> you know, so he, <clears throat> and, you know, we, you, you believe in good intentions, don't you? I mean, I think he had good intentions. Um, see, this always happens. You can't touch anything around here without it. Ah, there we go. Except for since I've dealt with these things my whole life from 15 playing in a rock band or a folk group. So, um, the thought of a young man is going to be different than the thought of a father. The thought of a or son of God is going to be different from the thought of the father. The thought of a young man or the thought of, of the prodigal or even the elder son is going to be how they perceive what God created and how things are there. But that's, that's, that's their frame of reference. Demons aren't over here in, in God, who is the beginning and the end, by the way. <clears throat> so their perceptions are still within the realm of time and within the realm of what can I do for the beginning and the end? And their understanding, their real basic understanding of what I'm relating to, pertaining to God, is what he was in the beginning and made and what it's going to be like in the end and when he stands before him. That's their real... So they want to... They want to serve, they want to build, they want to do, they want to produce. And it's all, you know, 
Let me say it like this. In light of the beginning, it's all futile because it is dealing with things that do not pertain to him as that. It's just the stuff he made and the structure in which we were born. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> I, what did he say? I know, you know, you fathers, because you have known him who was from the beginning. He says it twice. Okay. Everything right here that comes out from God, I'm going to tell you right now, is complicated. Because it, but it's just aspects of one. You see, one. It's just aspects of one. It's aspects of one, and it's aspects of three that are one. But it's still one, but it's aspects of three that are one. So, you know, we say, okay, well, there's so, so many chords, or there's so many colors, or that what all comes from three. It all is. It all comes down basically to, to simplicity. But we can't see it because it's not simple. It's complicated to us because we're trying to figure it out in the things that He made or. In the beginning, God created instead of in the beginning, God. Okay. So our focus, the young man's focus is going to be, what can I do within this realm? I'm gonna, I want to go out. Here's the prodigal son. I want to go out and I want to I wanna, I wanna make things happen, but I'm going to need what? I'm going to need the father to give me his stuff. Wrong motive, wrong place, wrong way to treat the father. Amen? Because you're, you're leaving the father. And this was, by the way, a Jew. So you're leaving the promised land. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're bound for trouble. That's all, that's all you can say. You're bound for trouble. All right. But maturity comes, and see, I, when I said you can be a child and be a Christian 20 years, 20 years, I perceive from people like David that you can be young and know, begin to know him that is from the beginning. I mean, you look at this guy. He's out tending the sheep. All of his brothers are going before Samuel. And Sam is going, this ain't it. You know, he doesn't know, though. He goes, oh, this, surely this is it. And God goes, that ain't it. The beginning of saying, that ain't it. Well, how do you know, Lord, because you're so deep in great knowledge and anything? No, I, I spend time with a guy out on a hill overlooking sheep. And he's always talking to me, and he's always thinking beyond the realm of the pasture that he's in charge of, which he called my father's sheep. Just completely different angle. A man after my own heart. A man after my own heart. Well, here's where his heart is. Did you see where I drew it? Did you see where I drew it? It's the beginning guy. It's the one who everything came out of, but he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is unchangeable, but he looks changeable. Why? Because we're looking at all this and we go, well, there's so many facets or there's so many teachings and doctrines or there's, you know, and, oh, it's all complicated. It's so complicated. Just answer me this. Does David look complicated to anybody? He seemed like a pretty simple guy, you know? Just, you know, he just... His, his heart was with the heart of God, okay. with the heart of the beginning. Okay. Well, that, you know, and I'm, this is a horrible way of putting this, but that moves David to the head of the class. <laughs> I mean, it means that he is going to be finding out source, source, and not what source can produce. Not, not produced materials, but source material, which is him, which is from the beginning. 
And see, that's, I love that. I love that in First John because it's, it's perfect because it doesn't tell you anything. It just says there's a him and you need to be looking for him. That's your pursuit. That's your focus. That's your goal. All right. So David wanders through this mess, you know, in his lifetime, and he messes up or he, he you know, somebody literally gets killed as a result from him or, you know, adultery. And, and if you look at, at um, King Saul's line, it was a lot straighter than David's. He didn't do near the junk David did. And I saw that very, very young, and I went, you know, I mean, my first thing was, this ain't right. This ain't right. Excuse me for being an elder son. At that moment. This ain't right. And then I kept seeing it, and I started coming to another realization. God is not near as concerned about what we do in this mess, and I'm not justifying anything. I'm just saying He's not near concerned about what we do in that mess as he is concerned with us finding him and his heart, and David did. And when, when, when he sinned with the whole Bathsheba thing and killing of Uriah and everything, that's where he said, what is that, Psalm 51, oh, my God. What a beautiful repentance. It wasn't, I'm a rich, yeah, I should, I should never have been born. And a bunch of those guys did say all that kind of stuff, which is right. You shouldn't have. You should have been born again, you know, of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. <clears throat> and so, you know, so, but David, he says, against you, against you only have I sinned. Well, He's talking about him, and he may not fully know who the, the definition of him yet, but somehow he's realized, I cannot spend my time worrying about all of this. I must know him. And apparently he went after the Lord in such a manner that God himself said, this right here, you know, and everyone around him could go, this right here, you know. Yeah, I choose what looks foolish, you know. I choose, you know, God, who do you choose? I choose the naked dancer. <laughs> and we go, oh, no, this can't be. <laughs> you know, because it just busts everything that we've, our religion, religion that was taught to us in this realm, don't touch that, do this, you know, believe that, walk this way, you failed, you're bad. You know, it's, uh, 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 you know, what, what kind of living is that for God's sake? You know, man. You know, I'm, I'm under condemnation. I'm really happy the Lord's with me because, you know, he did something that wasn't meant to prove that you're special, but you took it that way. <laughs> right? And so you're, you're bipolar, you know? And, you know, you're up, you're down, you're, uh, you know, you're sideways, uh, you know, you know, oh, no, not the side. And David, David, if you think about it, David's walk, we see it in light of the failures. But God sees it more of a straight line. But here's why. Here's why. Because when he did mess up, like in what we would see here, he always went back to the source. And it was like, you know, you, you know, I, have you ever noticed in the, in the Old Testament how little it talks about someone saying, I love, I love God. I love Jesus. I love God. It's like, that seems weird, you know. And one of the only places is David in Psalms. He says, I love you, Lord, with all my heart and soul and strength, but I am not keeping no freaking commandments. I just love you from my heart, and I want to be with you, you know. And God would say, clearly you're not keeping any stinking commandments, buddy. 
But, but, you always go back to the source. You always go back to the one. And God said, this is my kingdom. I can build a kingdom on that. A kingdom. A solid kingdom on that. And I can move out enemies. You ever wonder why uh, God moved out David's enemies like he did? I mean, he really did. I mean, you know, we got enemies, don't we? You go, oh, I got, no, I'm talking about in here. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going, yeah, I got enemies. I see them. Well, there they are. <laughs> you know? And, you know, but David, man, he, had, he took his mighty men and they would just take over enemies left and right, left and right. I mean, it just... And then when it all got peaceful, he gave it over to Solomon and said, I give you a peaceful kingdom. God, God is wanting maturity, but it has nothing to do with this realm. And he's not trying to just make us young men. He's trying to get us to the place where once we can... We, we know the scriptures pretty well and we can cast out demons and we, we are strong and we're this and that to say, you know what? It's not about me being strong or casting out any demons. Oh, I got power. I know I went that route. I got power. You know, I can lay hands on the sea. I can do all this stuff. And then you, you one day realize, even though, you know, some of you know, I mean, I worked with Kenneth Copeland and, and that evangelistic thing and everything and believed everything that was said and done until until God began to deal with me and before I ever went to Bible school I had some friends who were going to Bible school they were going to go to Berea and they said um, they said Randy are you going to go because they all just, you know, once somebody said, they all were going to go, you know. Randy, are you going to go? And I said, no, I'm going to pray and fast. I, I need to know if God wants me to go. And, um, and Kenneth Copeland had said at the last time I was there around him, he said, you should pray for a revelation of the cross. He said that, but he didn't know what he was saying. But I mean, you know, at that time, and he probably knows more than I do now, but I'm just telling you, at that time I heard that and I went, I went, yeah. And so, so I wasn't just praying for an answer to Bible school. I wanted a revelation of the cross. And he opened my eyes to the flood and showed me Christ crucified in that story of Noah. Blew me away. As clear, as clear as day, I could see Christ crucified in that story. And I began to see, not fullness by any means, source material. Beginning, the, the beginning, the beginning of all of that. And he said, you, you know, you'll know the beginning from the end. But you also know the end from the beginning. it never changes it never changes this this is just a bar on which he hangs here and 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 here it's just a bar on which he hangs but this is where he's stuck to it he is there he is the, what's it saying, Isaiah, about the nail, you know, has him uh, impaled, as it were, in God the Father, in the Holy Spirit, in who he is. And there, beginning and end, but still the end is the beginning. Still, It's still the beginning. Because it this just, this just clouds our human brain. And we're moved by, we're, we're given a brain, but we're given a spirit. Especially when we're born again. And what did, what did, uh, what, what was his name? Elihu in the book of Job? 
you know, there's a spirit in man. He's the young one. And he's speaking the, this incredible things about, were you there at the beginning? Da, 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 da? Well, this is the beginning. You know, we go, well, I wasn't there when the giraffes came. You know, that's us. You know, we're going, oh, I wasn't there when the rivers. Were you there in the beginning? Did you see the beginning? Do you know the source substance that created it all, but it just confuses us because we can't even go to the, the one thing. One thing have I desired. Who said that? David. Well, you know, we can't even go to the one thing and just say one thing. I have one focus, one desire. I don't I don't want to I don't want to proceed in the church and become something that everybody respects. The truth is, if you know this here, you're going to know a slaughtered lamb and you're probably not going to be very respected. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter to you when the time comes. See, I know I sat I sat there as a student. I know that and I know <gasps> You know, I know all that can go through a heart, yeah, because it went through mine. And said, so, oh, you know, I really don't want that. I want to be like Kenneth Colton. I want to be a famous evangelist and be rich and drive a Cadillac and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I want people to respect me. And I think probably early on David said that, and, and God the Father just put his arm around little David and said, buddy, this is going to be a rough ride <laughs> because you're going to see me and you're going to conform to me, but it won't be near what you thought it was. Your mind was still in here. And you're going, well, this is, and that wasn't speaking in tongues. That's, that's whining, <laughs> you know, and, and so the mind does all that. It just goes, But the, can't the heart, yes. can't the heart be reached? Can't the spirit, the Holy Spirit bear witness with our spirit and say, because that's what happened to me. He started bearing witness with my spirit that we were the sons of God. Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Source, Abba Beginning, find the eternal. We um, we had just recently we got in con were made in contact with somebody who was with us originally on Maple Street, uh, took Bible school classes and stuff like that, and um, <clears throat> so he sent me a text and you know said well I you know I had fond memories of when I was there and that really was what I needed at that time and you know now I'm married and got kids and. You know, I'm sure you've got grandkids and da 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 da. And so I had Deb contact him and, and, uh, and he wrote back and he said something like this. He said, well, I thought of y'all because God has brought me to a place where I just don't want to mess with all this other stuff. I want what's eternal. Now, didn't didn't this just happen? Just happened within the last two days, and it was it was real, and it was a true cry saying, "I want to get out of this." He says it's almost like he was saying, "All of this is has been uh, a distraction, has been the very thing, even though it was about God, it wasn't Him, and it and it messed me up, and I." And I think maybe we planted a little seed in him that there's something eternal that you could break out and go after that. And he's going, I'm, I am doing it. I am doing it. And, you know, uh, Deb, you know, had contacted him and uh, she almost said to him, you know, you know, like, I mean, they weren't talking on the phone, but it's almost like uh, you haven't gotten on the internet yet? <laughs> Why aren't you 
why do you, why are you looking with you know um, gratitude toward us when there's plenty of stuff that can say negative. But you know, I've found that the people that God wants to draw and whatever, he's drawn them to him, not us. And he, he makes them blind. He makes them blind to those kind of things. He, they just, they, it's right in front of them. And you just go, oh, look, here's where I can get in touch with them. And, you know, and, and it was just a, it was a real wonder in his heart of, of and gratitude of, uh, you know, I just wanted to reconnect because I'm now in a better place than I was even then. And I know where I got the seeds and I'm grateful, you know. Well, that's, that's not our business, is it? That's God's business. It's not our business. It's not my business. There's no credit that goes to me. And this may surprise you. I'm sorry if you can't believe this. But nothing rises in me. Nothing rises in me and says, oh, yeah, I, 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 and I don't need that for, um, what, support and, you know, to feel better about myself. I don't even go there. I've got support. My God. I've got something that, that holds me, not every day or every week or every month, that holds me every minute. And it is that God, that I cried out early on and said, I don't have a father. And I tried to make certain people of my father. And the father intervened and he said, so and so is not your father. Lot will not be your son. I will bring forth a son out of you. I will be your father. I will bring forth the son out of you. Because that's the, that's the true father. Amen. No, no, it is. It's the true fathering. And I didn't do it, and I don't deserve it, and I don't, you know, and I don't not deserve it. I know that sounds weird. I'm not focused on whether I deserve it or not. Again, David's true straight line is here, not all of this. Everybody can mark that, but God doesn't mark it ultimately. He says in the crisis, your heart was, came to me. Your heart said, as it were, Father. But it was the Son. And it is always the son that will always honor the father. And it's the father who will always honor the son, not you. So get out of you. Quit trying to improve you. Quit trying to get better. Quit trying to, you know, attain instead of decrease. And the decrease is, is the greatest thing that could ever happen. The greatest thing that could ever happen. I mean, you know, the greatest thing is the increase of him. But, I mean, on our part... We always go, oh, I don't want to decrease, or, or yes, I want to decrease the things that I don't like about me. But there's stuff that you like about you that God really hates, okay? <laughs> you know. And it's not the son. That's the bottom line to God isn't, oh, that's horrible. It is, that ain't my son. That ain't my son, you know. And so David just kept that focus. He kept that, you know, it's like a, a chain connected to the Father and connected to his heart, God's heart and to his heart. <clears throat> and, it, <clears throat> and, and it's like if, if, let's put that to the Holy Spirit. Let's just address it like that in a way. The chain connected to the Holy Spirit and to his heart and the Holy Spirit runs like crazy. He's, he's like uh, Mercury. He just... He's fleet-footed, and he runs, and he's going all over the place like this, and he's dragging you. <laughs> and you're bouncing around. <laughs> but when he stops, he comes over, and he starts saying that. Now I want to explain the journey. Not in terms of the journey, but in terms of the beginning. Now I want to explain the journey. 
<laughs> you go, could you first heal me a little bit? Because <laughs> you know, he can be, he can be wild. He really can. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> no, I'm not going to say any more. But, um, <clears throat> but that, the wonder of it is that no matter how rough, the chain is still between you. And the chain is still between you and the Father. And the chain is still between you and the Son. And every time, every time, every time, at any point in your walk, at anything, when you turn from all of this to this, he says, come on in. <clears throat> he says, that's, that's your key right there. Have you ever heard of the key of David? Well, it wasn't a key to the mysteries of, you know, you know, um, and and you think about that, you think about that, you think about David, the the Ark of the Covenant, where, where the presence of God was, had been long years taken from Shiloh, and as soon as David becomes king, he goes. We're going to go bring it back. This is what we're going to bring back, the beginning. This is what we're going to bring back. This is what we're going to be about as a people. This is what's important. So in, in the process of bringing it back, what happens? All this junk, he messes up. And he just, it just breaks his heart. He doesn't go, oh, I'm a horrible person. It breaks his heart because he wasn't in tune with the Lord on the way that he wanted to do it. It's like my zeal, because he was brand new and it was a young king. My zeal, I want to do this for you and I want to bring back this, the original and I want to I want to do this. And then failure comes, the normal thing to do is to turn on yourself. So I failed. But David turned to God, and he turned to the Word, and he found God's, and God said, that's not the way I do it. What a great lesson, I know. I mean, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's the bumpity bump, bump, bump. You know, it's hard, but what a great lesson. Because he goes, okay, it's not my mind, is it? Even though my heart says this, my mind needs to be controlled. My mind needs to be under. It needs to be a submissive tool instead of a demanding, commanding entity within me. And he learns. And he fails again and he learns. And he fails again. But what is he learning? That's the key. He's not learning how to do it right. He's learning the beginning. He's going to the source over and over and over and over. The two sons, both of them, totally left the source, the father. Totally, totally. Got mixed up in the, in the created things and thought, both of them, I think, thought I'm, we're going to do it the right way, but they both had different ways, and they're both wrong. And only coming back to the Father and the Source can you see his face, can you see his ring, his ring, can you see his robe, can you see his shoes, can you see his altar, can you see his fatted calf, can you see him slaughter? Can you see him eat? Can you see him feed you? Can you see what he feeds you on? Can you rejoice with him? Can you? Can you? Father, thank you for Jim being gone so that we could be wild and go longer. We thank you. We thank you that your spirit woos us. We thank you that the truth is the truth is the truth. And when we find him as the truth, we quit searching truths. 
and our heart goes after him in everything, every time. It, even in failures, then it goes back to him. When it gets off and goes after something else it, and fails, it goes back to him because that's where the heart yearning is, not to know, not to be, not to, but just to be with him on whatever level he wants. Amen. And I'll just end with one final story. Last night <clears throat> it was really nice. You know, I have a deck on our two-story house up there, and I went out there. It was dark, and, of course, I let Mama Cakes in, and she comes out on the deck there with me, and it's so, so, the breeze is so good, and, and the lighting is just right. It's just barely lighting where you can enjoy the night. And... Um, and Mama Cakes comes up and she sits beside my chair and and man, I'm just letting that slight breeze blow on me and I'm just enjoying the, being with the Lord. I mean, it was like there was no teaching going on. It was just, I'm just enjoying you, Lord. I'm just enjoying being yours, you know. I'm just blessed that that, you know, you exist and that you brought me to want to know you by your heart, by spirit laws instead of man's laws, and 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 uh, just but just in a very so relaxed, so pleasant to to be there. And I look down at Mama Cakes, and she's just she's just laying there with her little head propped up, looking up at me. And I just ran through this little quick thing in my mind. I went, you know, when she's downstairs with with um, Handsome, the other cat, they're together all day. And they don't talk, and they really don't interact, but they lay together, you know, some, one over here sometimes, one over there. Sometimes they're together on the little bench, but they just enjoy one another's company. And I thought, and we're just enjoying one another's company. And me with the Lord, we're just enjoying one another's company. And how, how pleasant this is and how uncomplicated it is. And I don't know, for whatever it's worth, I just thought I'd tell you that story. Be blessed, y'all. Love you.